Welcome to Pinball Mayhem. My name is Jeremy Agema, and I can't even play the new pin I got. It's all in pieces. But uh, that's okay, because I like buying stuff like that. I'm kind of weird that way. But, uh, yeah, it's a little bummer that I got, uh, you know, this pin right back here. And uh kind of looks like it's in jail with the way these clamps are. But thank you to my friend Scott, who's helping me fix the cabinet. Uh, it will hopefully be as strong as new. Let's go take it the take a look at the new acquisition. This wasn't the way I had planned to uh, reveal this pin, but uh, you get to see the bits and pieces, and uh, yeah, should be pretty cool. Let's flip the camera around and uh, take a super quick look, and then we'll get into the video where we uh, fix the cabinet. Of course, what we got here for those of you who are in the know is a Bride of Pinbot. This one in particular has a neat story with me. I worked on this in 2013, I believe. I had it in my house for, gosh, over three months working on it. Just, you know, just taking my time uh, for the former owner. I certainly learned to appreciate it then, uh, but it wasn't really a must-have, but I definitely liked it. And uh, just with streaming over the past year, uh, it's 2021 now when I do this. I've decided I wanted it again. And I um, wanted it for my home. And it turns out that <laughs> the one I got was the one I originally worked on. Uh, we're, this is, like I said, this is going to be just super quick introduction. Then we'll go into the uh, cabinet repair here. Um, but overall, it's not in too bad a condition. Uh, it's been through a few owners since the uh, person who I worked on it for owned it. But uh, this is the play field the upside down play field and how I know it's the exact same machine is uh, I have some pictures of course when I worked on it but right down here on her neck if you will I put this uh, kind of fancy foil type of stuff on there because I thought just the regular steel didn't look very good and that's kind of the main reason I know it's mine or the one I worked on all right there's all the pieces uh, I've also got a video that I'll be releasing next or maybe one or two weeks after this one uh, showing kind of a general idea of how to clean the uh, trans light and how I do it, which isn't necessarily the right way, but hey, it's how I do it and it is what it is. Let's get on with the rest of the video. Here is the Bride of Pinbot project. And the first thing I got to tackle before I really dig into anything else is this cabinet. Unfortunately, this cabinet has not been treated very well. And this corner has got a blowout. We got it propped open here. I'm uh, having Scott advise me on this because he has done more cabinet repair than me. But basically what had happened is either sliding this thing in and out of a vehicle or something or being dropped. But... There's actually supposed to be woodwork that's supposed to make this a super tight joint. And in reality, it's a really good quality joint. But this one in particular has had a rough life. So might have got banged real hard on the bottom and shifted things around. But um, basically what I did is I removed the old glue that I could because uh, somebody has been in here and glued it twice. So this, this is a uh, Pinball Mayhem special event. Welcome to the D&D world. I'm Scott. Jeremy is usually on this side of the camera. I'm usually on that side of the camera. But today, since I am the expert at fixing cabinets, or at least the guy in our group that does it more than everybody else, except for Ed. Ed. <laughs> um, we're going to take and actually try and glue up this uh, Bride of Pinbot cabinet. Um, it had a little damage on the front lower kick cabinet corner um, and it popped the seam. Now they actually use a locking joint to lock the two pieces of plywood together. Um, it's actually a really sturdy joint. Um, it's using a lot of cabinetry but um, over time it gets a little dry and the wood will you know swell, contract and sometimes that joint can pop loose a little bit. Put a little pressure on it and it'll uh, crack. Um, we're going to use this really cool product called wood glue not gorilla glue not super glue not epoxy you're going to use wood to glue wood you're going to use wood glue to glue wood together because that's what it's designed to do um we actually uh, picked out a whole bunch of gorilla glue out of here which uh held somewhat but uh was kind of sloppy and gross and uh got everywhere so 
three things that we're going to talk about real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and get this done. Um, one, on a cabinet this old, you're going to want to take and get to the edges of the wood a little bit wet. I am not talking about soaking it and swelling it. I'm talking about just running a damp sponge like we have here and just running it down the inside edge to get just a little bit of water in here. What ends up happening is if it's really, really dry, like this cabinet is because it's so old, what will end up happening is once you put the wood glue on, it will pretty much have all the moisture sucked out of it as it hits the cabinet and it'll dry out and won't make a good uh, contact. So we take a little bit of uh, water on a sponge and just kind of run it down into the crack. Um, we did a test dry fit on this before we actually started any of this to uh, make sure that it you know got cinched back together as much as we could and uh, we're kind of happy with where we are right now so um, then we're going to take a what's known as an acid brush dirt cheap buy big packs of them you're going to need them when you do kind of stuff like this and uh, the wood glue and we're just going to take and you know, smear some wood glue down into the uh, crack um, and then we got bar clamps on the floor over here that we are going to use to hold everything together. Um, I like using four to five clamps when I do a cabinet, um, two across the front and two across the side minimum. As you see I've got four so I can do a whole front section. If it busted out I can put a whole front section back together or a whole back of the cabinet. Um, we're actually probably going to use uh, three long ones and two short ones on this to you know run down the side. Um, you can actually pull and uh, rack the cabinet a little bit um, if you go a little heavy on the pressure so need to be a little careful about that. Um, last thing you need to know about is proper gluing technique. Now I am by no means a cabinet maker. Um, I've known a couple and got a few hints and there's going to be all kinds of people in the comments telling us how we're doing everything wrong but that's how we're going to do it this time so run a bead of glue down it, um, clamp it up, hold it together um, the last thing we're going to talk about is clamping pressure. Um, you want to actually put just enough pressure on to hold the pieces together without forcing all the glue out. So when you clamp the wood together, you want to make sure that you tighten it down till the glue just starts squeezing out. You don't want to go past that. What will end up happening if you do is you'll squeeze almost all the glue out and then there will be no glue to actually hold the wood pieces together because you forced it all out while you were clamp clamping. So too soft, too uh, uh, light a pressure, and you'll have a whole bunch of glue leaking down the bottom. You'll know immediately if you did it wrong because there'll be a little puddle of glue when you come down in the morning. And my best bet for that would be to take a little bit of water, soften it back up, and see if you can pull it back together a little tighter if it's still soft enough. And usually it's not. You have to take and chip it back out or let it go. But we're not going to do either one. We're going to get it just right, and we're going to take and cinch this cabinet back together, and Jeremy's going to have all kinds of fun videos for you on how to take and put the play field back in and fix everything up. So we'll see you after we uh, get this all cinched up. Okay, we got the clamps on, and the top one's just kind of sitting there spare right now, and here is our corner. So what we want to show you is this is where you stop. Um, see here a little bit of glue just squidged out we uh, clamped it down we got a nice tight seam here we're gonna put one more clamp on to take and cinch this top up a little bit if we can we're gonna put a little glue on top there but when you get glue to start squeezing out like this you don't want to keep going you want to stop and leave it because that means that you've got good clean contact and it's pushing out the excess that's in there so that's where you want to stop and then you just take a damp sponge and just wipe off the corner a little bit, get that wood glue off, or you're going to be really sorry when you take the clamps off because you're going to have a whole bunch of wood glue that you're going to have to take and try and clean up, and it's going to be little droplets. It's, it's kind of a mess. Work your way around. You can actually loosen the clamp back up one at a time, clean up underneath them if you need to, and then uh, cinch it back down. Um, I'm pretty happy with the bottom corner here. It's still got a little gap. We're going to take and fill that in some, with some wood putty, but it's all pulled back together. Um, I don't see any need to do anything else with it right now. Uh, we are going to take and take out the inside block and replace it with a new one just to help reinforce the corner like it's supposed to be. And uh, we'll show you what this looks like when it's uh, dry in a couple days. We're not, we're not going to mic me up? No, we're close enough. Wow. Yeah. 
So our production quality is going down, <laughs> is what you're saying. Quick and easy. 